What is going on, guys? Wiser here, bringing you the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was a random weekday matchup against War and Glory. Uh, love with the uh, sort of organization of the CWL. We're finding as well a lot of those clans are randomly searching about the same time, so we're getting a lot more good random matchups. Although this was a random matchup against a good clan, I wouldn't really classify this as a good random matchup. This was such a mismatch, it was pretty unfortunate. Um, you know, 83 to 77 was the victory for War and Glory. You know, 2.0 did put forth overall a really good effort. Um, you know, with the uh, the crummy disadvantage there was, War and Glory did reach out to us and said, hey, you guys want to try and even things up? Because they did have, I think they had two extra Town Hall 11s, and then at least three, yeah, because this is a Town Hall 10. I want to say at least four extra Town Hall 10s. Yeah, because that's our bottom 10 right there at number 12. So not four, sorry, because they had two extra, and they're down to there. I don't know. It was a big disadvantage for us, but, oh, well, we just kind of said, you know what, guys, <laughs> there's so much. There's no point in trying. Let's just uh, play it as is, and uh, we will give War and Glory our best. And we tried. Uh, you know, our nines came out and did a really good job. Tens uh, and elevens did what they could. Just uh, could not, unfortunately, make it uh, even a little bit closer. It kind of sucks, but oh well. Anyhow, really good war overall for our nines. We have a lot of good attacks. I do want to show in here real quickly. Uh, I'm going to try and get this recap done before I got to go to work this afternoon. So we're going to jump in and check out SB. A lot of six-pack champs at the Town Hall 9 level. SB being one of them, bringing this very interesting attack. You'll notice the army comp before uh, anything. Without looking at the spells, you're like, oh, that's like an avalanche attack with a few balloons. What is that? Then we look at the spells and we realize that there's some earthquakes and a jump uh, with a rage and a heal. So I thought this was just a very interesting breakdown of the base. Uh, drops these wizards very quickly on that town hall. Gets that funnel created very quickly. Nice little freebies for the for the wizards over there to take care of that town hall without losing any golem health whatsoever so it goes that first goal a couple more wizards backing things up just going to clear up this whole nine o'clock section um idea is to clear out the nine kind of get everything moving up sort of towards 12 take care of the funnel from the 12 to 3 let's break on into this uh big big open core now that basically has access because look at that little corner that opened up the queen chamber also gives access to that last air defense and that queen <clears throat> so nice quick wizards in take care of that king down goes the defensive king down goes the mortar the funnel is basically created now jump spell is down letting everything right on into that uh, earthquake core so here come the bowlers all four golems going in, although one is busted and one is about to bust, but it doesn't matter. Gets that king in behind. Queen gets sold up on that Lava Hound there for a moment, but no big deal. Take care of those pups, all those wizards helping out at the same time. Beautiful. Hound is now taken care of. <clears throat> Does have a heal spell in the bag as well. I think he's going to go ahead and uh, drop that on the core to keep his bowlers. There it is. Keep his bowlers, keep his king, keep that goal, those golems up there. So that defensive queen is about to lock on. Locks onto that king, so he jumps on over. He's going to go ahead and smack down that defensive queen. And down she goes. Air defense number three is down. Just got to let these units work into this queen chamber so that last air defense can go down. The queen is eventually going to make her way over. So then come the balloons. A few per defenses on all these uh, outer compartments here. Just wants to protect that king as long as possible. So down go those defenses, down goes that last air defense, that queen finally stepped up and took care of business. Go ahead and get a few wizards down, a couple arches down on the huts on the corners. This base is GG, very sexy breakdown SB. I'd like to know, I'm going to have to ask you, what about this base? Was it that core? Was it that earthquake that really caused you to bring this comp? Because I, I just thought that was very, very interesting. It was like a... You know, a very heavy avalanche with wizards uh, into the earthquakes to get the air defense and using the seven balloons on the back end. I don't know. I just thought that was genius. Nice job, buddy. Um, all right. 22, Dalek Boy. Bringing the drags, bringing the zap quake, bringing a little bit of a queen walk here. <clears throat> So the sort of newer, these, these bases, base designs are very interesting. These very compact base designs with very exposed air defense. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, again, I, like I've always said about how the meta of base building evolves, I'm just not convinced. I think I think the only reason why uh, these guys have success uh, with these sort of newer wave base designs uh, is more because people are just not used to hitting them. And, and once they kind of get the idea of what works on them and what they can do um, to expose or to uh, abuse, I guess, the fact that all these air defense are just really on the outside. Um, the bases get very, very weak as opposed to a traditional, um, just very, uh, very fundamental base design. Anyhow, uh, is what it is. Dally Boy going in, huge funnels created. A couple air defenses are taken care of. He's already zap quaked the queen, uh, queen chamber air defense. There's only one more air defense to go, and the way his queen's going to go is she's going to walk all the way around this stuff. And get air defense number four in the process. So perfect. Dragons are in, taking care of business. They're going to work their way right through that core. That's basically what the heroes of bowlers did on either side. They just set this path for the drags to rip through the core of this base without any threats of air defense whatsoever. Down goes air defense number four via the queen. It's got to work those drags in through the rest of this stuff. And this base is done for. It even has that balloon, kind of a couple balloons going in on those random defenses. Wizard Tower goes down, just a bunch of trash. Dally Boy kills it with the tree in the bag. Nice job, buddy. Boom. Alright, derp -a doo Bring in just a shattered with a walk here. And bowlers. So it's going to go ahead and drop this queen down, drop these healers down. Again, very exposed air defense on this side. Knows this queen's going to just basically walk in, tic tac toe, take care of the air defense, take care of all these point defenses on the outside. Gets those wizards down, helping just make sure that queen now from this cannon is going to walk across. <clears throat> so down goes that air defense just in time, too, because it started targeting those healers. But the queen's going to work her way up to this army cap. So in come these golems right at this little Tesla farm hiding behind this down hall here. Wizard goes down. It's going to do that funneling work on that side. Gets that king in very, very quickly. It locks on. Starts smashing through all this stuff. Bowler's working through that town hall. Bam, bam, bam. Down go the Teslas. Down goes the jump spell. Letting things right on into this very large um, chamber. I'm noticing a lot of the newer base designs involve... These very uh, small outer compartments to prevent, you know, uh, basically a lot of small compartments. You, you want to just make these bowl lalos very tricky. You want bowlers. You want things to get uh, hung up on walls. But part of the issue is if people are very tricky with their jump spells like Derp is here, he's going to unlock exactly the sections of base that he wants. Basically let them go in this zigzag fashion straight through the core of the base. Um, nothing to stop him. All these hogs moving in through these outer compartments. You know, he got three giant bombs, this triple giant bombs, another little newer essence of base design at Town Hall 9 that I'm not a fan of. And this is exactly why. Sorry, that was the bomb tower and double bomb. Here goes the other double bomb on that side. Hogs didn't even come close to it. I don't think he's lost any hogs this whole raid. Other maybe a spring trap or two. They're cleaning up all over the base. Queen's still up there. Bam. Absolutely crushed it, Derp. Nice job, man. Good old flower. Bringing a sort of unconventional attack for him. He's going to go ahead and bring the stone entry. Um, patented uh, two loons in, taking care of that mortar real quickly so his golems don't walk. Down it goes. Goes ahead and gets that uh, go first golem in right on the 12 o'clock tip. That's exactly why he dropped those balloons. Take care of that mortar. You wanted that golem parked right there. Let those wizards do their funneling work. Same thing over at the 9 o'clock section there. Wizards get their funneling job done. I'm going to step up, start taking care of that arch tower, take care of that king. So we basically got a nice little pathway now going into these longer compartments. Has the double jump spell. So here comes that first jump. I'm going to let things right in. The second jump is going to go ahead and unlock pretty much the rest of the core. The only thing that you might be wondering is, well, this queen is way over here. So um, Chad knows he's going to get at least two air defense, get the Tesla farm, probably get the Expos. Huge value out of that. Pull up that clan castle. The only thing left is going to be this queen. 
but oh, that's why we brought old school drag swap. Here go the drags, two drags in, right on this queen chamber. They're going to do their thing, work through that stuff, lock on to that defensive queen here in one moment. <laughs> Even though that queen ends up getting over there, trying to smack down those heroes. Um, I think, finally there, she goes over to the dragons. I knew the drags took her out. Drags lock on, boom, 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 few breaths, and down goes that queen. Job is done. All the air defense are down. We got some balloons now working in to the base on all these sort of outer defenses. There's very few of them left, actually, in this whole raid. Drag's again, still going to get good value. Finally loses one. But he's got balloons working in on that uh, arch tower, which is the last thing that's going to target air other than the wizard tower that the dragon just took down now. few little trash buildings to go. <clears throat> very, very nice hit, Chad. That is tree in the bag, my friend. Bunch of swag, too. Uh, 19, 18, DH. Pretty a really cool sort of P.E.K.K.A. Smash style attack. Although he's not bringing any healers for the P.E.K.K.A.s. He's bringing a golem and a few wizards to create the, create the funnel. And then just sending the P.E.K.K.A.s with the king. Almost right up the middle. Uh, joins the queen up here. Very interesting king placement. Uh, definitely not a fan of being you being able to take out my defensive king so easily like that. Just right on the outside. I want, ideally, when I'm placing my king, I want things engaging that king when they're under a lot of DPS. Because the, the king will has quite a few hit points. It holds things up. Things like bowlers, things, anything. It holds them up. Whether, um, no matter what troop it is, so you want them under a huge DPS, not just having one cannon attack because your archer queen can quite easily just use a poison and take care of the defensive king very, very quickly, all on her own. So the, uh, his queen's done her job, right? She's taking care of that defensive queen, taking care of the defensive king, created the funnel from 12 to almost 9 here. So go ahead, drop that golem, create the funnel down now at like the 7 o'clock location. And we're going to go ahead and drop the king, drop the pekkas, drop the bowlers in. Using this town hall as our little breadcrumb, let everything kind of work right into this little nook. And we're going to smash into the core from this point. Queen's joined up. This whole little kill ball now is now getting formed here. Out comes that clan cast. We're going to go ahead and get that poison down nice and quickly. <clears throat> Just got to work through a bunch of goblins. <clears throat> no big deal. Gets everything moving into the base here. Pekka's even sort of help out and smash through a different part of the wall. Uh, jump spell connects everything. Still everything moving in unison through this core here. Keep in mind he's got five baby Ds. He's now going to start just sprinkling it on the outside, doing their work, sort of starting to take care of all these outer trash buildings, start working into these defenses. While well, all of this stuff is still in the core, absolutely crushing it. Both P.E.K.K.A.s still alive. They're just smashing through walls very, very, very quickly. And it's using the baby drags sort of strategically to kind of keep everything moving around. Uh, does have to... Uh, or maybe not. Uh, you know, Queen's getting pretty low health there. Um, but going to hit that ability on that Queen fairly, fairly soon. Just got to get this last sort of storage down. Once that goes down, everything's going to start routing back up and take care of this 12 to 2 section. This is all that remains. Basically a Tesla, a Mortar, and a Sweeper. No chance for three baby drags, a couple bowlers, a King, and a Queen. Bam, bam, down it goes, down goes the test, and that's a three star in the bag, nice job there, DH. Beautiful, all right, let's go, uh, I got one 10v10 triple, and I'm going to call it a day here. Good old Iceman bringing this uh, Shattered Lalo with bowlers, love it. <clears throat> Just gets the archers down on the builder's huts on the corners, nice and quickly. He's basically going to go ahead and core, uh, quake this core. I like the placement because he just gets that one little brick on the tip, and that was the most important thing to get. He's going to go ahead and drop that first golem, get that high hit point gold storage out of the way. Then those wizards are going to step up, start working on that cannon after the trash. Down goes the cannon. Golem's going to step up. We're going to go ahead and drop a second golem. So uh, waited for that cannon to go down so we can get a nice spread, get a nice proper funnel for these bowlers created. <clears throat> goes ahead and opens the wall, test breaker in, rest her in, wall gets open, looking good, golems are going to route on into that hole, 
Defensive King locks on, up comes that Clan Castle. We're going to go ahead and just rage it up through this stuff. No poisons necessary because we did bring Earthquakes, remember. <clears throat> Down goes the Loon. All the Bowlers go in. Not one of them walks, so good, good job on that. Just got to work through those defensive heroes now and in onto that core. Goes ahead and gets a heal spell down, which is kind of nice because it protects those bowlers just long enough. Um, if you saw they got low health, that Inferno would have killed them, but the heal brought them back up just before they went into Inferno range and let them live long enough to smash through this core. Look at this point. Still hasn't dropped his balloons. Do we see an air defense left on the map? No, we don't. <laughs> so this base is in trouble at this point because the heroes are still doing work. He now has balloons sprinkling in from all over the base. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and drop that Lava Hound on the cannon. Since we brought it anyways, we may as well use it. Down goes the Wiz Tower. Just got to work through this little Tesla farm. and We have 11, count them, 11 balloons for basically only five, six structures that even target arrow. So he's going to just go ahead, two, 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 two. Let's get all these defenses to go down basically all at the same time. Down goes one, down goes two, down goes those arch towers. And we're on cleanup mode. Sexy. Ice man. Crushed it. It's tree in the bag. All right, thanks for the war, war and glory. It was a pleasure matching you folks. Uh, hopefully we've been on a little bit more even grounds. Uh, we do appreciate you guys reaching out, though, and uh, doing your best to try and try and maybe even things up with this horrible, horrible mismatch. Uh, because the thing is, usually when you get mismatches like this, it's because the other side, you know, their Town Hall 11s are, are rushed. They still have super low point defense or you know they have a bunch of town hall tens with level three inferno towers but like town hall eight you know like they're they're rushed right so the overall weight is still pretty close because we have a bunch of max town hall nines that are basically equaling their rush town hall tens and elevens in weight uh but obviously against a clan like war glory that's not the case right like i mean they're the they're they're max nines basically i mean i guess you know town hall eight point defense but you know what i'm getting at guys um just just a strange mismatch oh well anyhow we do have our uh week four cwl matchup hopefully uh 2.0 can get back on track with the win against the emphatic elite we are searching this afternoon so look forward to that recap for this weekend guys other than that that'll do it here for your wisdom from wiser just trying to help it back that next tree start till then i'm up